Hello my friends, welcome back. My name is Melanie with Melanie Smith Stamps and today we are playing with two of the registration plates from Cheers to You collection. This first one is the Peony Perfection and then the second one is the Spriggs. And the Spriggs is the one we're going to be doing the actual building of and with today. But this peony perfection is beautiful. It's got the registration there in the background. And as you can see, it is thoroughly loved already. It's got six of the press plates and one of the dies. And um, this Spriggs registration is huge. Now, we, I mean... I don't even know where to start on this one. It makes a complete background, but it also has individual dies that cut out every single sprig. So you can make the background using the registration plate as it shows here. And, and I've done a panel here, I'm gonna show you. And you lay the registration down and you use each color individually like I've shown previously in videos. And here is the outcome I came up with. I used different colors of oxide inks, and I'm gonna show you how that works today with oxides. But I, the colors I've chosen are Catch Flamingo and Antique Linen. And I've used Salvage Patina in Tumbled Glass, and then Seedless Preserves. So those are the five inks that I've used in my sample. And I'm gonna show you how beautifully they ink today. But I just could not believe the size of this set. So I had to show you this set on screen. And I love the way the oxides actually cover a solid plate. Now these are all solid images rather than detailed images. So the thickness of the oxide ink, I was very impressed with the solid coverage. You can really see the opaqueness of that oxide ink on the plates. So you know when the coverage is really, really good. So I'm just using a scrap piece of paper here. And of course I could use a bigger piece, but hey, I'm being thrifty. So of course it's a little more challenging when you're being thrifty, but better press paper is better press paper. So I'm just going to go carefully and we will cross our fingers and we will see what happens. So I'm lining it up with the grid marks and just making sure that those sprigs are under there. And then I decide to use the dies. I like to do this because the dies are a little bigger than, of course, the press plates. So by lining the dies up under there, I can see how much farther out they are and I can just kind of adjust accordingly. Now it's still going to be an eyeballing thing because at this moment I'm not thinking to myself well when I ink them they're going to move around a little bit. So user you know error but it, it's all okay. Like I said it is a ballpark thing but um, surprisingly enough it works out all really well. So I'm inking it up here, and as you can see, it looks quite messy because the ink is very thick, but it's okay. Don't be scared. It washes off really easily. And I'm really going at it and getting a really good coverage, and you will see the beauty of it in a moment. So I'm taking my time, and I'm inking it up. I'm leaving this at regular speed, so you can see the actual speed of this and not rushing through it to save time. I'm gonna use my tool in one and I'm just going to push these right out of my way for a moment so I can clean the plate. This is just to prevent that ink from transferring to my paper. It doesn't usually happen, but occasionally it can. So since it was super inky, I decided to just do that. It's super easy. And I figure, why not? It's just better safe than sorry. Like I said, it's better press paper. But you really don't have to most of the time. 
So I am going to just line this back up here. And again, we're just kind of glancing. We're crossing those fingers and we're going to run it through our platinum six. As Simon Hurley would say, awkward silence here. <laughs> so out it comes. Let's turn it over and wow, look how solid and crisp those images are. I love this. It's so fresh. And I love that this set comes with those dies. So I am going to die cut these out. And we're going to use these on our project as embellishment leaves. And I just think that's the coolest thing, that you can have the background and then you can have leaves on your projects too. So that's what we're going to do here. And I am just going to line these up and we're going to run these through. Now as I'm recording this, just a little side note, I am actually headed on vacation. So we are, I'm actually not even packed yet. It's a Friday night when I'm recording this. I leave tomorrow morning. I'm not even packed yet. So I'm recording this so that you have content while I'm gone. Actually, the day this goes live, I'll be returning home and coming back. So I'm, I'm doing this in preparedness so you guys all have content while I'm away. And I don't want y'all to be left lonely. So I have been working eagerly to get to make sure you have three videos while I'm away, enjoying my husband in the Gatlinburg Smoky Mountains. So I hope you enjoy the videos or you have enjoyed them this past week. Now I'm just carefully using that tape on the outside of the dies because I do not like when my better press paper rips up a little bit. And I know it's all happened to y'all too. So I just like to be extra careful and place that tape on the outside of the die. We'll run this through and we'll get our embellishments and then we will put our card together. And I think you guys will like the outcome of this card. So we're done with our die cutting. I've got everything else cut out to speed the video along. I do have this video down to 20 minutes, which I'm really ecstatic about. I'm trying super hard to shorten my videos for y'all. I used to have them and they were like an hour. And now I'm really getting them down to like 20 minutes. So I'm excited that that's happening. So <laughs> I've already got my card base and yes, it needs a little bit of trimming. So I'm gonna trim that super quick. I did just get this tonic trimmer where has it been all my life? This is the new rotary trimmer, or it's new to me. It's been out for a while, probably about six months. Love it, love it, love it. So I have that in my stash now. Now I still like the Spellbinders one because it is better for detailed cutting. But the Tim Holtz one is the workhorse in the craft room. Now, what I'm showing you here is this is the first time I'm using these large blender brushes by Spellbinders. I received them from Spellbinders to share and show, and this is the first chance I'm getting to use them. I am lightly dusting, that's kind of the best description I can go here with this, lightly dusting the card base or card stock here with my blender brush, and look how soft an outcome I get with this blender brush. It's so big, but that's the beauty of it, is it's just so smooth and so seamless. So I am wanting one of those for every color, I think, just one for every color. And I think I'm gonna reserve them just for oxides because oxides blend so beautifully. And I think if I had those for backgrounds, those would be perfect for backgrounds only. Not only, but you know what I mean. I think that's what I'd use them for. So that is on my wish list. So Spellbinders, put them on sale. Hopefully they'll be on sale in this new sale right now. Do you know that there is a big warehouse sale going on right now? It started on the 16th. Hopefully by now it is still running and there's still things left because this is the big spring warehouse sale. 
So it is was just announced earlier today as I'm recording this on the 12th. And it starts on the 16th, and I'm not sure how long it runs for, but if you're watching this, go check out the website because it will be huge, I promise. The big warehouse sales are always the biggest of the year, and the markdowns are usually drastic. They are trying to make room for all the Christmas stuff that's coming in July and August, so this is the time to get a bargain. I would appreciate it if you would use my links down below. Those always help support my channel and help me keep going. So maybe I could pick up a couple of those blender brushes. <laughs> but yeah, those pennies do go towards the expenses here on my channel. So I appreciate those little pennies when they come in. And they don't cost anything for you to use. So thank you so much for using my links down below. So I have put together my card back here. And I've got my little arch, which is going to be our little focal point. I've got it inked up with that little ombre of the linen. And I, um, the antique linen, the Distress Oxide antique linen. And I'm going to pop this up and put it on the center of the card base. And then we've got a glimmered sentiment that I believe is a Simon Hurley sentiment. I had it in my stash that was already glimmered and it matched perfectly. So we're gonna use that as our sentiment. And then I've got some florals from the stitching die of the month this month that were left over from my projects for clubs. So I went ahead and I'm using those. And I love those dies, guys. If you like stitching or like even the look of these florals, that stitching set would be perfect for a beginner. If you've never stitched before, that one would be a great one to pick up. It is super easy and it is just beautiful. And there's so many ways to do the little flowers. It's like, however you do it, it will be perfect. So on this one, I just did a straight stitch and it's lovely. And the little twigs that I've done with it, the um, along with it, I have actually, those are from the set as well. And they are, there's the detail in the stitching there. And I put a little French knot there in the middle. But um, they are also from the stitching, even though they're not stitching. So you do get actual florals or little um, greenery from it too. And I am going to use these twigs that we made or sprigs, let me correct myself, sprigs that we made from the Sprigs Better Press set. And we're going to use those in conjunction with these little sprigs that came with the stitching. Now for this, I went ahead and inked up some paper with the Catch Flamingo to coordinate so it would match our background. And that's what I've made the little buds out of. And these buds we're going to just add to the ends of our, our sprigs here. And then we will have our little floral arrangement ready to all glue in place. And our card will be complete. So I'm just going to finish this here. This is the fine tip glue that our glue bottle that just came out from Spellbinders. Um, it's really good at precision. I am struggling a little bit to keep it unclogged. I have found the best way to unclog it when it does get unclogged is just to unscrew the little yellow cap on the top and just take your pin, use your pin coming in from the yellow side and just poke it straight through and it comes undone and it is brilliant when it's in action because the glue comes out in such a fine little tip that you can get the little tiny details and you don't have the overflowing glue. So I really do love that about it. So we're going to get our greenery down here and then glue our flower. And I think I'm going to use some 3D adhesive for that flower just a little bit. But we'll put our little flower sprigs on there too and then attach our flower and it'll be all coordinated.
She just sneezed. Bless you, Miss Lola. Miss Lola is right here by my feet. Here is our little glue, our little adhesive square. That's all we need there for our flower. And we will finish this little baby up. Come here, Miss Lola. You can't be on the screen tonight. No, you can't. You can't be on the screen. Everybody's going to think you're being funny tonight. And here we go. Perfect. There we go. Just a note. Just a note to say thank you so much. Now, I'm going to put just a few of the essential gems on. I'm using a Gina K gem picker here which just makes it a lot easier. You can use any pokey tool, but I just have this one and have been using it forever. So I just am putting a few little rhinestones on it. And I bet you anything, these are gonna go on sale. So these will probably be on sale when this airs. So I've got those about finished. And then this one will be done and we just have one other card to glue together real quick. Look at that. I just love that flower. I don't know what it is about that stitched flower this month. I just love that flower. So here's the other card. This is the Better Press Posies or Peony. I'm sorry. The Peony Perfection is the name of this plate. Now I have put some double stick adhesive here on the back. This is actually from scrapbook.com. It comes in thicker uh, or wider strips, which just made it easier for me to um, cover the back side of this. And I've gutted that piece of glitter paper there in on my background because I wanted to save the glitter paper. So I do that often on my specialty card. And I'm just going to line this up and we're going to have a gorgeous sentiment, I mean a gorgeous framed card. Look at that. All it needs is three little gems and bam, we have a beautiful card finished and that glitter card just makes it pop these are the spectrum a B essential gems I really like these because they um, they really pull out the colors the spectrum the colors that are in the card so the spectrum a B are some of my favorite along with the crystal mix those are those are some of my favorite I use those and the Aurora those are probably my three favorites of the um, the essential gems. And I love that they make them in such tiny sizes and not too big. Like the little itty bitty ones are great, but the, even the largest ones that are on the sheet are not too big. And this card only needs three. So that is my second card. And we have both of them done. And those are the florals from this collection. I hope you've enjoyed both of these cards. I'm sorry for all the chitter chatter in this one and um, all of the mixed up talk, but thank you for stopping by today and I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.